there comes a time when every generation must make a choice to choose whether to acquiesce and passively accept what is happening in the world around them or to choose to fight. And there is no doubt whatsoever in my mind that this generation has chosen to fight. When we march down to Parliament today, we are marching alongside workers, the unemployed and pensioners, everyone who stands to lose under this government. We are united in a common cause. We stand together, we march together, we fight together. We will fight for every penny they try and scrap, every job that they try and destroy. We will chase every Liberal Democrat liar, every fat cat Tory, every millionaire tax dodger out of town. They are not welcome here. If the tuition fee vote passes today, this is not the end. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. We are building a movement. We come now to the draft Higher Education Basic Amount England Regulations 2010. Minister or Whip to move. Next move. Thank you. The question is as on the order paper. As many as I have that opinion say aye. 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 Of the contrary, no. no. The eyes to the right, 323. The nose to the left, 302. So the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Well, there you have it. On Thursday night, after weeks of protests, the divided British government voted to pass the dreaded education fee hikes and benefit cuts. The vote came down while thousands of angry students, teachers and their allies were penned in by police outside Parliament. What happened next wasn't pretty. The new statesman's Laurie Penny was in the thick of it. What are the broader repercussions for British politics, the state and police tactics? Laurie Penny joins me next. Laurie, welcome to the program. Welcome back. Hi, how are you? So the shots that you just saw there in our roll-in video don't bring you yet the glimpse of what happened after that vote happened. Darkness had already fallen in Parliament Square. You were there. What happened? Well, um, even before the vote was passed, there was a considerable amount of uh, police brutality in the kettle outside uh, so Westminster and Parliament Square. Because, and what you've got to understand is that these young people have been trying to demonstrate in Parliament Square for about a month. I mean, they'd have had all different kind of kinds of kettling techniques, containment techniques to try and keep them away from protesting outside the seat of government. And they finally broke in. You know, they broke through the police lines, broke in. You know, stand right on the statue of church. Chill. Um, but the backlash was very quick. You know, people were trying to get out. People were, you know, the, the police were pushing us back in, back, back into the square, crushing people in. And I saw a lot of police just battening young people, you know, whacking young girls over the head. I saw my friend, the Guardian journalist, Shiv Malik, I just saw him stumbling back from the line with blood streaming down his head. I saw them drag a boy out of a wheelchair, a boy called Jodie McIntyre with cerebral palsy. And they dragged him out of his wheelchair, whacked him on the head. And, um, and his brother was standing next to him. So, where are you taking my brother? And, you know, then they actually grabbed the wheelchair and then hit the wheelchair as if to sort of destroy the evidence. It was absolutely incredible. You know, I stood right in front of that line, you know, when the horses were charging right at us. And it was terrifying. It was really terrifying. It felt like the end of everything. Mm. It felt like, you know, the relationship between state and citizen had totally broken down. Like there was no order left, basically. What does it mean when people talk about this as a defining moment? First, politically, who's it defining? Well, I think it's a defining moment for our generation in that it's a moment when we realised first that the state no longer listens to us. I think we realised that very clearly when this tuition fees bill was first tabled, that the state will go back on its promises, that they will sell us out. But it's also a moment for politics as a whole, particularly British politics, when people have realised that you know there, there is no longer a, a civil contract between the government and its citizens. You know, the, a, an elected government 
can now do totally the opposite of what it's been elected on a, on a, on a barely elected mandate to do. And then if the citizens, you know, rise up and demonstrate against it, they will be brutally repressed, mm. uh, particularly young children. And, you know, seeing young, you know, there was a boy put in hospital with bleeding on the brain and that scene somehow is totally as totally okay. You know, there's been almost nothing about it in the papers. And for me, I find that totally shocking. I find that really sort of a damning indictment of what the society has come to. Yeah. Come to. In the United States, a lot of people first heard that there'd been protest when the news broke that somehow uh, Prince Charles and Lady Camilla had been touched. Um, <laughs> what about the reporters Europe-wide? What kind of coverage has this struggle gotten? Well, obviously, uh, the focus has been very much on Prince Charles and Camilla, which um, for the, for anybody who was there, the fact that, you know, two, el two middle-aged elderly people got their Rolls Royce slightly damaged and one of them was poked with a stick. Oh, no. You know, that's not actually important compared to the fact that, you know, the, fun the futures of the, these young people have been taken away. And there have been, you know, many, many young people, protesters, seriously injured by the police. Mm. You know, Charles and Camilla weren't hurt. It's seen, you know, in Britain and in Europe as this kind of huge offensive thing that, you know, somehow, oh, no, the Royal Rolls Royce, you know, you know, don't don't worry about, you know, education for all. Don't worry about the safety of young people. Don't worry about the actual progress of democracy. But as soon as you threaten the Royal Rolls Royce, you know, somehow that's awful. You know, even, you know, most of the major newspapers have that as their front story rather than as we know it ends for another generation, so which is actually what happened. We might be you know. following your lead over here. Um, let's talk a bit about Nick Clegg of the Liberal Democrats. We've been hearing a lot in this country of spin about how, um, well, compromise on the Democratic side is better than we think. I heard that from Nick Clegg, too, in his speech after the vote. Take a look. I think, I think of course, you need to be careful, and I should have been more careful, perhaps, uh, in signing that pledge at the time. At the time, I really thought we could do it. I just didn't know, of course, before we came into government, quite what the you know, state of the finances was. We didn't win the election outright. This is also part of a compromise in a coalition uh, government. So, of course, there's been a bit of a give and take. But as I say, I think if people look at the detail, it's the first time ever that all full-time and part-time students won't pay any upfront fees. All graduates yeah. will pay less per month than they do now. I hope, I hope, I understand the anger. I hope when people look in the detail and they ask themselves what it means for them, yeah. or more importantly, what it means for their children or for their grandchildren, they'll think it actually makes sense. He'd opposed a tuition hike, and now he had to go along with it. He's talking compromise. What are you making of it, Laurie, there? Well, um, for most of us watching this, it seems like utter nonsense, because, I mean, everybody knows that the Liberal Democrats promised to oppose any rise in tuition fees at all, and now they're overseeing the trebling of tuition fees. I mean, Vince Cable, who is the um, senior um, politician uh, dealing with economic affairs, um, in the election campaign, he said, you know, tuition fees are a terrible idea. And now he's coming out specifically proposing and voting for a bill which will treble tuition fees. I mean, this looks like from any way, any way around you put it, any way you spin it, that looks like gross hypocrisy. And what I mean, what actually that means for the Liberal Democrats is the end of any any hope of really being elected at the, at the, at the next election. For most people this, people, this looks like the end of the party. So perhaps by coincidence, there's a new public opinion poll out from The Guardian about attitudes in Britain, and it's sort of contradictory. It looks as if there's less support for welfare and benefit recipients than there used to be, more concern about the wealth gap, but less support for government actually doing anything to redistribute wealth. What do you make of that? What's happened in that country over these decades? And do you think this moment has a chance to turn the tide or attitudes around? Well, um, much as you've seen in America over the past few decades, um, there has really been a propaganda campaign on, on the part of successive governments, you know, to stack the tide of public opinion against welfare, against state redistribution, against any any concept of, of really socialism or, you know, public redistribution as a function of government. But I really think that this in Britain, certainly, this could be a turning point. This, because I mean, a lot of people my age are being radicalised. Are thinking that actually we don't want, you know, centrist parties with, you know, just the same manifesto with little tweaks. You know, it's just kind of very, very, very different, very little difference. Sorry, between Labour and the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats, or in America, very little difference between the Republicans and the Democratic Party. What we want is something completely new, and that's what I'm picking up when I'm talking to, you know, 15, 16 year olds who are suddenly 
going back, you know, reading Marx, reading Gramsci, and coming out with all these ideas that, you know, actually fairness means something different, you know, and you, you can give something back and get something from your community that's more than just, you know, waiting for politicians to gradually make the change for you. Laurie, thank you so very much. Appreciate it. Laurie Penny from the New Statesman.